We are back. You guys are probably too young, but Mace, huge rapper in the 90s. Took, you don't understand Mace, you nerds, all right? He, he crushed the 90s with P. Diddy and Biggie, and then he took a little break, and then the 2000s, he came out with the jam. Welcome, 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 welcome back. A little Mace in the background right now to tell you guys that I'm back, that the vlogs are back, that we're traveling again, that we're lifting weights again, that this channel has just been pumped with 93 high octane gasoline. But you know, people talk about pheromones and I believe I've heard uh, that if you're trying to find a real mate, there's two things. Welcome, good morning to Silent Mike's dating show. There's two things we need to, to automatically attract a mate. One is you need a high, extreme, intense, endorphin rushing situation. Often, people have found, this is really good for me, by the way, that words are coming out of my mouth. I've had no caffeine. Normally, things are I'm blabbering, but right now we're flowing. A theme park, a gym, perhaps jumping out of a freaking airplane, whatever is getting those adrenals going, it's likely that maybe the men and the women around you are also going to feel these same emotions and hormones and you're all gonna be attracted to another, one another. Another situation that may occur, and I've heard this works, I don't know, maybe we'll test it today with the tall, dark, and handsome in the other room, is that if you smell one's armpits, just get a big whiff from the sex that you, or gender that you are attracted to, and you get a whiff of that thing, there's gonna be an automatic attraction or maybe nothing. Um, but the natural pheromones of not wearing deodorant uh, is what this world needs and, and, and that the estrogen and, and, and lack of attraction and lack of sexual feelings are being um, escalated here in America because of this type of antiperspirant we're using. And now, don't quote me, but you should probably Google that because there is some truth in there somewhere. This all started, I forgot my deodorant, and I was telling the boys, I don't really smell. I, 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 I can count on my hand, one hand, that the amount of times I've had B.O. It's a fit, dude. I asked him how many hats he's wearing. He said, I'm cleaning? Yeah, but it was on the table. What does that have to do with anything, dude? Oh my, he just hit my dick. Uh, Who is this guy? <laughs> play video games with him a couple times and he acts like you know, he knows you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Quarter mile make a right turn on South Boston Bypass Road. Just ahead make a right turn on Surface Road. Yeah, way better. Way better. <laughs> oh, amazing. PAX East, Boston, Massachusetts, 2019. My first gaming expo ever. I guess we went to TwitchCon, I don't know if it counts. Very excited, about 11 o'clock. We chose Sunday, one, because it was cheaper tickets and I'm cheap. Too, because I heard it's less packed, so now we get to make a bunch of new friends. Like my new friend Smashly. <laughs> oh my god. Pax was cool. A couple deductions? Reductions? Deductions. I deduced? What did you deduce? I deduce. It's an extreme expo. I, th I guess all expos I think are extreme, but the Arnold for some reason took a route where it became a little more mainstream for just people like to fitness, so they would show up to this. This is still extreme, which is cool, but it's kind of, it's kind of funneled into the PC RPG world. You agree? Where I'm, I wouldn't call myself a casual gamer by any sense of the, like I'm in it, like I watch some competitive stuff, I've played some wagers, I've played video games my whole life, but I'm more in the console world still, just because it's preference, and first person shooters, and I guess more major titles where this had a lot of indie stuff, which is really cool to see, but it's not stuff I'd play. And then it's all, yeah, highly PC driven. And I'd actually say, what, 25% is probably involved with like card games and stuff. Pokemons, Gather, Magic. And, and that's kind of outside of my wheelhouse as well. I'm aware of it, but it's not what I do. Um, cool experience, I think we're gonna head back. We're just grabbing a snack. I have eaten nothing except for a pure shot of insulin to my stomach from that croissant. <laughs> Good, huh? Damn, yeah, right there. Coffees, one LaCroix, five dudes, one gym, one city, one mission, 
Time to get sore. Gonna bench, uh, do some chin-ups, uh, a little bit of arm work up here. Probably re-warm up my lower body, go downstairs, do some lunges. They kind of have two gyms here, it's sick. Uh, upstairs is kind of like a mix of what you kind of typically expect, plus some, I mean, they, they, they cater it to what they do as a company. So like they have some like, obviously punching bags and stuff for kind of the UFC MMA world that they work in. And the yoga studio, some shit up here, uh, a bunch of cardio machines. And then they also have like kind of regular gym stuff, you know, some cable machines, bench, etc. upstairs. Uh, and then downstairs is more uh, their CrossFit gym. So they've obviously had a partnership with CrossFit for years. Um, so we'll do the upper body here then probably head downstairs, squat a little bit and then uh, probably call it a day. Uh, go find some food. So medium to long workout headed. Um, not going too heavy on anything besides squats. I might try to hit like a nice little double or something. Uh, we'll see what happens, see how my back feels. Uh, the bed I was sleeping in from like 1985. Didn't feel so great, but uh, after I warm up, it should feel fine. I think Bretsky's mentioned with me. We'll see what the other nerds are doing. And then uh, on to the adventures. Fuck, guys. Welcome to Bean Down. I'm here to do some squats. I've been challenged by the one and only Omar Isoff. And then I guess re-challenged, -re double-challenged by Bart Kwan to see who can squat. 405 pounds for the most amount of reps and as many of you know uh, i am now dieting uh, i am also on the strength comeback uh took a little bit of time off from the strength game just working on a little bit of hypertrophy having some fun feeling good doing a lot of cardio focusing on my businesses my podcast uh and my twitch but now the strength game's back uh, i'm focusing really hard on my squat and soon going to introduce more high frequency uh benching so I'm excited for this, excited for a little mini challenge with the boys. Uh, it's always good fun. It's always friendly. No one really cares who wins because I'm 0-10 on YouTube challenges. But I'm undefeated in your heart, and I'm undefeated in real life. Uh, when real competition comes up, I tend to get a little bit more focused and serious. When I'm just having fun with the boys, I tend to have fun with the boys and not stress about it. So 405 squat challenge going down. Uh, and that's what I did on this, uh, training day. So we only had one training day while we were all in Boston. Uh, shout out to my boy Bretsky right there. The guy who supports me through thick and thin. Uh, he's my manager over at Reebok. You guys have seen him in a bunch of vlogs, but, uh, Bretsky brought me and the boys into Reebok upstairs. As you guys have maybe seen kind of more of a typical gym, uh, dumbbells, squat rack, barbells, bunch of cardio machines, um, a boxing ring, different things that they use throughout their campaigns for obviously their sneakers and apparel uh, but also this is the employee only gym uh, and then downstairs is more of a crossfit strength and conditioning style gym uh, and not only for footage to look better for you guys for pictures for instagram etc cetera, etc cetera, but also for my brains uh, i want to train them both uh, so we did a little bit of upper body fluff upstairs uh, i didn't necessarily want to bench bench but i did some uh, pushing with the incline press standing dumbbell which is what my favorite look at that new clean mullet gosh darn it Gosh darn it, that thing looks clean. Uh, and then uh, I did a little uh, chin-ups in between. And actually last night, uh, let's shout out Connor, who's been working his tail off for this channel for years now, uh, filming and uh, editing and taking a bunch of my pictures and helping me not be a bum. Uh, he actually said, Mike, uh, I was looking at old pictures and it looks like you lost a lot of muscle. Well, according to this video right here, I look freaking jacked. So screw you, Connor. Uh, and yeah, am I, the, am I the most photogenic human on the planet? No, not even close, but uh, I actually am pretty happy with my progress. Um, I was going through some philosophical thoughts in my brains, thinking uh, this morning about uh, negativity. Uh, I handle negativity very poorly. Uh, I am my own self, worst self-critic, and so when I hear negativity from others about myself, I get even more negative because like, I've already told myself those same comments a hundred times. Mike, you're not good at this improve on this. Mike, you need to work better at this. Mike, you need to be nicer here. You need to do this, this, and this. So then when I hear a third outside critique from somebody I know or I don't know, um, it holds a lot of weight to me and really affects me. On top of that, I'm insanely sensitive human being, so it never helps. Man, here I go trying to have a philosophical talk and I'm shaking my wee-wee around in a gym. I'm a real embarrassment. Um, but basically what it comes down to is what I think is Everyone talks about, you know, those people saying these comments are self-conscious or whatever it is. But what I actually think, and that may be the case, some people may have, uh, you know, 
self-esteem issues in themselves they're trying to project onto me uh, or whoever they see on the internet. But what I honestly think it is, is that they're critiquing me like they would critique themselves, which I do think a, a little bit of self-critique, uh, self-analysis, self-awareness is a, is a healthy thing for, to allow yourself to know what to improve, what you like about yourself, what you maybe want to work on yourself and get better. Uh, for instance, I put up a picture of my two week diet progress. Um, no, I don't take PEDs. No, I don't have enhancements. No, I don't use Photoshop. So the progress you see may not be what you're used to seeing on the internet, uh, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And people are insulting my chest saying it's not very full. And for how much I lift weights, I don't have much musculature and this and that, this and that. And I was thinking, well, like that kid probably really wants a fuller chest. And so for him, looking at me, he said, well, your chest ain't full. But for me, I've never looked at my chest and like, man, I really want a fuller chest. My sinking chest bugs me. You know what I mean? So his own self-critique, he's projecting the self-critique, maybe not even the self-esteem or the, 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 the negative stuff onto me, uh, wanting to, I guess, help me improve my chest. But I'm pretty happy with myself, uh, to be quite honest. And, and that sounds maybe dumb for some of you, but I've been in this game a long time as a coach. I've been in this game a long time as an athlete. Um, I'm, I'm literally the leanest I've ever been weighing about 200, 205 pounds. I've only been leaner one more time previous to this with Omar's help. Um, my squats aren't, aren't maybe the strongest they've ever been, uh, but they're the cleanest they've ever been. Uh, I'm feeling really comfortable with my form. I'm staying in a really tight groove. Uh, I can't hand, handle the volume I want right now as we're building back up to my work capacity. Um, but I'm feeling the ground. I'm feeling really balanced and I'm feeling really explosive on all my squats. So we worked up to 425 for like three or four today, uh, a couple down back downs. Um, I'm doing similar things every single day, uh, somewhere between a single and a triple on a top set, somewhere between, um, you know, RPE eight or nine, depending how healthy I'm feeling. And then a couple back downs with the volume I can handle squatting two to three times a week. Uh, just some thoughts. I've been having lately that I thought I'd share with you guys, but uh, here's the top set. Shout out to Reebok for always taking care of me and the family, man. They, they, they've they had my back for five years and, and it really means a lot. You guys know me. I don't really co-sign with a lot of brands. There's not a lot of people, companies, uh, especially in the industry we uh, I live in that I, that I truly believe in and I put my name on, um, but Reebok stamped their name on me and, and I'll always have their back as long as they're taking care of me. So uh, appreciate that. Fun trip, 405 squats next week. A little bit of cardio afterwards, upper body fluff, feeling good, feeling great. Get a little bit of sweat on, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of the videos. We're moving to three times a week, so uh, Monday, Thursday, Saturday video. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Thumbs up. Efficient workout. Felt good. Got everything I needed. We are. I've been challenged by Omar Isaf. I accept thy challenge. So I had to hit some squats. Uh, 425 for four, which is a comeback PR. Felt pretty dang good if i do say so myself um then a little bit of salt bike get a little sweat on get some of that pizza out of my system i've been to boston as you guys know been working with reebok for five years so i've been here probably 10 times uh and it has like nostalgia to me because my dad used to work here all the time he worked for john hancock back in the day and one of their main headquarters is here and when i was a kid my dad was gone like th every three weeks he'd be gone for two or three weeks and he always talked about boston and liking the East Coast, uh, and obviously as a kid, I never got to go out here, and I never got to visit here with him, um, but it's pretty cool to kind of make it a home away out for home for me. Um, so we're gonna go to the North End, show uh, Kyle Bear, those on the Twitch scene. That's Fast Fingies Kai. He's one of my main gaming homies that uh, games with me all the time. Become a really close friend, so he's never been to the East Coast. He's never been further than the Mississippi. And so we're gonna show him uh, what Little Italy's all about. Oh, it's fire, son. Four pizzas. Three dudes. We got friends on the way, right? Four pizzas. We got friends. <laughs> that is four pizzas, three dudes. <laughs> That's all, folks.